What does it mean to be in ministry? A longing for others to be led to Jesus Christ? The overwhelming urge to share the gospel to any and all? A call to love others as Jesus loves us? And to seek first the kingdom of God above all else? For the last five decades, to Earl Stevenson, ministry has meant these things and more. Earl's practical approach to preaching, teaching, and living the Bible has been a catalyst for 50 years in ministry, an unprecedented tenure spreading the good news of Jesus to thousands upon thousands of those seeking the truth of the Word of God. Our story begins in the heart of Southwest Oklahoma, Kiowa County, Hobart, America, the home of the Bearcats. Earl Wesley Stevenson was born on July 12, 1956, to Jerry and Ina Bell Stevenson at Hobart General Hospital. As the oldest of four children in the Stevenson household, Earl grew up helping his father, who was a bricklayer, spending time with his mother, who goes by Tiny, and being big brother to Sandra, Sherry, and Rex. The home place where Earl grew up is located just southwest of Hobart, along the famous Funkhauser Freeway. Earl's sister Sandra still resides there to this day. If there is one thing that has been ingrained in the way Earl lives his life, it is the pride of always remembering where he comes from. If you ask Earl about his childhood, I'm sure he would tell you of precious memories with his parents, siblings, friends, and family. And one area he holds very dear to his heart is his love for Hobart and the memories he made growing up there. Earl's days at Bearcat Stadium are among some of his fondest. Bearcat country is a rarity in today's world. Small town America at its finest. You see, in Hobart, You earned your colors, literally. The blue and gold adorning the school and the various town establishments meant something to young bear cubs who would become bear cats and earn the right to wear these colors with pride. Earl wears his to this day, proudly. Never forgetting his roots and never forgetting those he met along the way, namely his elementary school best friend, Nancy Ferrand. As time went on, this relationship blossomed, and Earl and Nancy became high school sweethearts and were married on June 23rd, 1978. So it was June 23rd, 1978, and we had been looking looking forward to this for quite a while. We had dated throughout high school, we'd met in third grade, and we were each other's best friends. And It was at the First Christian Church in Hobart, Oklahoma at 7.30 that evening. And it was just wonderful. Gary Caldwell did the uh, wedding ceremony. He was a, a friend of Earl's from OBU and still is a friend today. And we got married um, and then we went out to the country club for the reception and then one of his OBU roommates drove us to where the car was and I thought we were going to die before we even got to go on our honeymoon. It was it was wild but it's been a wonderful time of marriage. We've been married for 43 years this past June. Leaving his beloved Hobart behind, Earl would graduate high school in 1974 
and begin his college career in Shawnee, Oklahoma at Oklahoma Baptist University. During his days at OBU, Earl met and befriended fellow pastors Roger Spradlin and Phil Neighbors. Earl has maintained these friendships to this day. Upon graduating with his Bachelor of Arts in 1978, Earl would be ordained to ministry at Washington Street Baptist Church, located in, you guessed it, Hobart, Oklahoma. Earl would complete his formal pastoral training at Southwest Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas from 1980 to 1982, earning his Master of Divinity. Oh, and speaking of Dr. Phil Neighbors, he has a few things to say about this. Congratulations, Earl, on your 20th anniversary as pastor of the First Baptist Church of Weatherford, Oklahoma. Your tenure there and your ministry through all these years has been an inspiration to me. We have so much in common. We first really became friends when we sat together and watched Johnny Bench and the Cincinnati Reds win the World Series while we were at Oklahoma Baptist University together. We also discovered that we have a wonderful passion for Oklahoma University football, and we're really looking forward to seeing how young Ethan Downs does from First Baptist Church Weatherford this year in Norman. We also have a common heritage. Your fourth great-grandpa and my fourth great-grandpa is the same man, Joseph Sewell. We're distant cousins through the Sewell family. And I've discovered through the years that there are no less than 15 preachers, 15 preachers, that have come from Joseph Sewell through the years. Even one preceded you at First Baptist Church Weatherford. That was Leon Sewell. So I'm proud of you. Every time I drive down Interstate 40 going west, as I come into Weatherford, I see that big steeple right in front of us. And it always reminds me to pray for you. And Earl, I pray for you every Sunday morning as I know you pray for me. God bless you on this big day. As a young preacher cutting his teeth, Earl served as the pastor of the Bessie Baptist Mission from 1977 to 1979. Then, he had the opportunity to be the associate pastor back home in Hobart at the First Baptist Church until 1980, when he entered seminary. Upon graduating from seminary in 1982, Earl was called to be the pastor of Harmony Baptist Church in Atoka, Oklahoma. For his whole life, all Earl had known was small town western Oklahoma, and now he was going to be a lead pastor nearly four hours away from Hobart. After a decade of serving in Harmony, Earl would continue building bridges and relationships as he was called an hour north of Atoka to be lead pastor of First Baptist Church Holdenville from 1993 to 2001. After nearly 20 years serving in these two churches, a new opportunity was presented. And after much prayer and listening to the Lord's call, Earl and Nancy would begin a new journey on this side of I-35. I went to seminary in 1980 I assumed that I would come back to Western Oklahoma uh, and, but that didn't happen we ended up and spent the biggest part of 20 years in Eastern Oklahoma uh, and then uh, when the Weatherford pastor position opened up um, a friend of mine asked me if he could submit my name uh, and he did and then through a several months process I uh, ended up and uh, they offered the opportunity for me to come here and, and it was a great chance and we've come and, and 
enjoyed it ever since. Well, our committee uh, 20 years ago now, uh, over 20 years ago, was made up of uh, Brad Bryant and Phil Weaver, Virgil Van Dusen, Mike Pickett, and myself. And uh, so I think we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of good times on the committee. Uh, we took our time. Had a lot. I think we had really good camaraderie. Worked together well as a group. And uh, and obviously uh, the end uh, got it right um, in that. Uh, we were able to have Earl and Nancy uh, come to our congregation. As Earl and Nancy came to FBC Weatherford in 2001, they were greeted with tidings from the welcome committee that brought a chuckle or two. The jury is still out on if they meant to misspell Earl's name and where exactly that toilet came from. As I, uh, you know, as I look back over the 20 years and think back of when, when all. Uh, when we were going through the resumes, I think one thing that really stood out to me was just the, the longevity that Earl had at uh, a couple of previous churches there. And, and I think that that um, was something that I felt like we needed as a congregation. We needed someone to come in and, and as Earl has said on many, many occasions, uh, to, do, to do life with us. And I think that uh, we needed someone to come in and build those relationships and, and uh, not just be a preacher, but be a pastor. Throughout two decades at FBC Weatherford, Earl's philosophy has remained the same. Work hard, love others, preach the Bible, have fun, and stay humble. Earl has strived to make the gospel the spotlight and has sought first the kingdom of God. Though he has worn many hats during his 50 years in ministry, some of his most important are husband to Nancy, dad to Jason and Lynn, and of course, his newest role as Poppy. Let's make one thing clear. Our pastor loves the Lord with all his heart, and he wants you to know of salvation through Christ Jesus above all else. But I think I'll leave the final word with the person who knows Earl best. Very thankful that he is my pastor also, because I can understand him. He doesn't speak way above your heads. He's fine. Um, I'm just very blessed to have him as my pastor all these years also. Some of you are facing an impossible situation and you've been there for a while and you're desperately close to giving up. Remember, God does the impossible in response to prayer. Don't quit praying. Don't quit believing. God can and will intervene on your behalf. Let's pray. God, I thank you that nothing is too hard for you. Thank you that you can open prison doors, that you can set captives free. And there's a lot of people that are listening right now that they feel like they're not in physical prison, but they are in prison to a situation that will not change. It hasn't. God, I pray you'd intervene and then give them encouragement to keep on keeping on. We thank you that nothing is too hard for you, that you miraculously rescue us. In your precious name we pray, amen.